good morning, everyone. Um, uh, the, the organizers here are incredibly kind people, We well organized the whole event. But I am a little bit concerned. I just wanted to set the record straight. I have been asked to open a session that is called Learning Through Mistakes. As you just heard, I am an academic, I am an engineer, and I am German, and I don't make mistakes. <laughs> so. Um, so I want to start off the session quite easy, as I do when I start lectures, and I just want to ask a simple question. Did you brush your teeth today? Yes. Great, I'm, I'm really glad about that. Um, not that I want to talk about brushing teeth, it's a very worthwhile topic, but uh, I'm fortunately not a dentist. Um, what I really would like to talk about is the service that was delivered by government to us whilst we were brushing our teeth. We use that service without thinking about it. I do that without thinking about it. You do that without thinking about it. And we just expect to get that service. And depending on your personality, you would have been very angry and frustrated if it wouldn't have been there. And again, depending on your personality, you would have either called the newspaper, if you're anything like me, or at least said to your friends how pathetic it was that government yet again isn't getting something right that's so simple to deliver. By now you know I'm talking about the water that you used whilst you were brushing your teeth and flushing out your mouth. And you used that service again a couple of minutes later when you flushed the toilet. 25 liters of drinking water going down the drain, being taken care of by the government, or let's say a municipal official, somebody working in one of these offices, making sure that the water from the toilet ended up in a water treatment plant. We often use water without thinking about it. We don't worry how it got to the tap and how it is coming out of that. We sometimes think about it in the context of it being a limited resource, and we switch the tap off if you're well educated or have children at school that tell us that whilst we are brushing our teeth. And um, the, the organizers, yet again, these very kind people, have put a glass of water here for me, and I will drink this water without wondering for a second if it will give me cholera or diarrhea, and I won't bring my own personalized tester, which I had to do when I was a queen in the Middle Ages. <laughs> but on a far... <laughs> You know, it's quite sad, it's completely sidetracking, but they have a screen here. You don't actually see the fantastic shoes everybody's wearing in this, because... <laughs> so, so, anyway... Anyway, on a, on a far more serious note, because this is actually a serious topic, did you know that 1.8 million people still die every single year on waterborne diseases? And 1.5 million of them are children under the age of five. And this means that more people, or, or let's say more children, die because of diarrhea than dying of AIDS, measles, and malaria combined. And the thing that frustrates me and a lot of others the most about it is that these deaths are really preventable. They're not depending on somebody making a difficult decision in a very heated situation to use a condom, and they're not based on the possibility of you or somebody being bitten by a mosquito. Governments have the responsibility to deliver safe water, and that's why we would have the right to be upset if we wouldn't have had water to flush out, our, uh, to wash out our mouths when we were brushing our teeth. 1.8 million people dying annually must mean that governments are not getting things right. And we know that when we look at the aid agencies and how they're shaking their heads at the incompetence of developing countries to get things right. So now you're all depressed, and, and uh, I want to move somewhere else. Um, so to take you somewhere completely different. Remember the days when you went to school and you had to study for a really, really difficult test and you went home from school and you said to your mom, I'm so worried, I have to study for this hectic test and I, I might not pass. And just for a moment, consider your mother would have responded something along this line. <gasps> no, you're right. You had bad marks in this topic before. You will never succeed. Uh, in actual fact, I should write this test for you, because I was really good at school in this. I, I mean, you could try, but likelihood is you might not succeed. What would your reaction have been? 
I mean, I would have stopped working, right? And I might have told a friend, and probably somebody would have suggested my mother would need therapy. <laughs> but reality is, unfortunately, the majority of mothers don't respond like that. The majority of mothers provide us with assistance and support and help us and create the ability and the belief that we can actually do this. Now, I believe that we are sometimes like the mother who says, you won't succeed when we discuss service delivery by government. And I want to take you somewhere completely different again. And I want to challenge you and, and imagine, which is very hard, I know that, but imagine that the people in government are just like you and I. <laughs> they try very hard, at least most of the time. Like you and I try very hard, at least most of the time. And they actually want to deliver safe water to you. They actually think about how to get it right, and they're concerned when it is not working. And some of them, particularly in the rural areas, have to climb a mountain, and the equipment they have is possibly just good enough to make it up a hill. So, what, when we look at these things, and we look at what do we have in these rural areas, we start not being surprised any longer when some of the governments use the fact that we already say they won't succeed as a good excuse to not even start climbing the hill. So, as I said, I believe that a lot of governments are actually using that as an excuse, and that is what hap is happening in developing countries like right now. We see that governments are not even starting to climb the hill and the mountain, because there are so many people saying from the beginning, you won't succeed. I was really challenged as a researcher from a university with a great team of people when we went into rural municipalities and we saw how hard municipal officials were working to deliver safe water under the hardest on, of conditions. We had to learn that our desire to help in rural communities required us in the first instance to take the time to understand what the real challenges were and, to actually re and we actually realized that the municipal officials in these rural areas actually knew what the communities needed. The team that I have at UCT, um, we, we look at mobile phones and the possibilities of using mobile phones to really monitor water supplies in rural communities and to make sure that the rural communities, when they have problems with boreholes and so on, that this information goes to the municipalities and the municipal officials. And we are a great team at a fantastic university. We have the best students and we have great ideas. And we develop great mobile applications because we can. So all of the applications we developed for this project were based on what we knew and had learned and researched of the problems of rural areas. And one of the really hard lessons we had to learn was that these fantastic ideas developed in Cape Town had not always relevance or application or offered any usefulness in the rural communities in the Eastern Cape or in other developing countries where we were working. We needed to learn that we needed to take time to understand. Now, one of the challenges with taking time is like I mean, you're having a luxury session today. You are taking a whole day time to listen to people like me. Normally, we don't have time. And the other problem is also that most of us actually know how to solve the majority of problems in the country. It doesn't matter if we're talking about the selection that we have for rugby teams, or if we're talking about crime, potholes. We actually know the problem is that the president doesn't phone us. That, that's actually the challenge. <laughs> And if he would, I could probably, with my best friend, sort the majority of things out of a cup of coffee. <laughs> the challenge is that the way we would solve the problems would be based on my understanding of the problems. It would be based on my terms. And when we talk about problems, we talk about them, and our help, we talk about it based on our desire to help on our terms and on our understanding. And I believe that if we do that, we stand a chance of becoming part of the problem. So my idea for TEDx is really simple. How about changing our view and our thinking about problems? How about 
taking the time to understand rather than being quick to criticize. And if you don't have the time, like we often don't have the time because we are very busy people, how about being honest at the next traditional government bashing setup at a dinner table and saying, I don't know because I haven't had the time to find out what the real challenges are. And they might know something that I don't. Thank you very much.